All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the second part of 5.6, which is finding the rational zeros and the roots, and we're actually going to graph those as well. So first thing I want to do is let's look at an actual graph and figure out the rational zeros from that graph so we can know what we're talking about. First thing is, so let's look how many possible rational zeros can there be? How many possible zeros can there be? All you have to do is you have to look for your degree. The power of your guys' polynomial will tell you how many possible zeros you can have. How many possible rational zeros you can have, I should say. So if you look at this problem here, it's going to have four zeros, and it's going to possibly have four rational zeros. What does that mean, the roots? Well, again, remember, that's where it crosses the x-axis. So this part right there, this part right there, this part right there, and that part right there are your actual rational zeros. Those are where it crosses your x-axis, your rational zeros. And let's look at those. We can tell what some of those are. So I can tell that this is x equals negative 2. This next one over here I can tell is x equals 1. That one's kind of harder to see, the third one. The fourth one we can tell is x equals 3. But that third one, I'm pretty sure that looks pretty close to x equals about 2.5, which is also the same as about 5 halves. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to, well, we could factor this completely if we wanted to, or I could take my zeros and I could show you what my factors of this are. So we have f of x is going to equal, well, when does x equals negative 2? So all we have to do is add 2 to that side to make it side equal to 0. So x plus 2 equals 0. There we go. That's this first problem there. So we know that our factor is x plus 2. The next part here, x equals 1, so really it's going to become x minus 1 equals 0, so that's our second piece. I'm going to skip this x equals 5 halves, and I'm going to come down to this part where it's x minus 3 equals 0, so I'm going to put that in there. And now I'm going to look at this guy, so really it's going to be x equals 5 halves. First thing I'm going to personally do is get rid of the fraction, so I'm going to multiply by 2, multiply by 2, those cancel. We get 2x equals 5. Now I'm going to subtract it to be 2x minus 5 equals 0, and that's going to be my factor. I personally don't like any fractions in my factors, so make sure you can get it so you don't have fractions if you can possibly make it happen. But there's my fully factored version. Look at that. I didn't even need to go and do p's over q's or anything like that. I just needed to take my roots that I have, my zeros, and plug them in. All right, now we're going to go and we're actually going to figure out the graph. We're going to figure out a sketch of the graph, I should say. So first thing is we need to find our possible rational zeros. Remember, that's our p's over our q's. All right, remembering our p's over our q's, our p's are our possible factors of negative 12 up there, and our q's are our possible factors of 3. Then our p's over our q's gets us our possible zeros, our possible rational zeros. Now that we have that, let's set up our synthetic division because we need to find at least one actual zero here, a factor. All right, now that I have that set up, I'm going to go and I'm going to find my possible, or I'm going to find my zeros, at least one that works. So I'm going to plug it in and guess and check and see which one works. So I did the work and I found out that negative one is a factor. That means that f of x equals x plus one times 3x squared, 3x squared plus 16x minus 12. So now I'm going to factor that problem more. Now that I have it fully factored, I'm going to find my zeros. So before I go any further, I want to note a couple things. In the purple there, so in this purple right there, that shows us our factors. Our factors are x plus 1, x plus 6, and 3x minus 2. Those are our factors. Our zeros of this problem are x equals 2 thirds, x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 6. Our possible rational zeros are our p's over q's. All of those are our possible rational zeros. The most actual rational zeros I could have are three of them. So those are some important things you need to make sure you understand, that we know all of that information from what we have. Now, we know it's a root of three. It's a positive leading coefficient, so it's going to start down and end up. We're going to go through these three zeros, so we're going to go through negative one, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and positive 2 thirds, which is about right there. And since I'm sketching it, it's okay that we can start there. And we're going to go, we're going to start down. We need to come back around to get that. 
and then when you come back up and end up, the odd, the odd degree is going to start down and end up when our leading coefficient is positive, and 3 is positive. So that's a sketch. That's just a sketch. If you graph it on your graphing calculator, it might look a little bit different than that. All right, so let's go over another example quick. I'm going to put up the P's over Q's here. All right, then we have to set up our synthetic division. Now we'll do some guessing and checking until we get a zero for a remainder. So the first zero I found was five, which means I'm going to rewrite my equation, my factored form. Now if you notice, we have a cubed still, so we still need to do another synthetic division. Nice thing is we don't have to do different P's over Q's. We already have our, all of our P's over Q's. We could do a second P's over Q for this second part. I'm personally not going to. I'm just going to redo it. And by redo it, I mean I'm going to write the new synthetic division using those numbers. So now again, we're going to do our synthetic division with our P's over Q's finding another zero. So now we have another zero. We have five and we have a half. Now let's rewrite our new factored function. All right, now I left that one as a half just because I can. It's not my final answer, so I'm going to leave it as a half right now. You could change it to 2x minus 1. That'd be fine as well, but I'm going to leave it like that. Now we have to look at that in a second, that last part. Can I factor that any further? So I have 2x squared plus 12x plus 18. Does anything multiply to get you 16 but adds to get you 12? Well, the answer is no. There isn't anything that does, so I need to go and I need to try doing the quadratic formula. So we're going to plug this into the quadratic formula. Remember, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And you guys need to, should know how to simplify that, and I'll simplify it for you quick which when we simplify it, we get x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. So, fun times, right? Now we need to graph this. So we have a couple good points that are easy to graph. We have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have a positive half right there. Now we go to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. Well, I know that square root of 5 is really close to 2. It's a little bit bigger than 2. So I know if I add negative 3 plus that, it's going to be close to negative 1. So I'm going to estimate it to be about right there. If I subtract it, we're looking a little bit past negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a little bit past there. Now when it's a positive coefficient, leading coefficient, and it's an even number, I'm going to start up and I'm going to end up. So I need to come around, go there, and end back up. And that's a sketch of what my graph should look like. All right, let's try this one. Again, let's do our P's over our Q's. So we have our P's over our Q's there. Now we're going to do our synthetic division. All right, now let's go ahead and let's try to guess which, our, which of our P's over Q's works as a real zero. And we get our negative 1 as a factor. So that means my current factor form is f of x equals x plus 1 times 2x squared minus 9x plus 9. And again, we're going to do our factor by grouping here. And we get those. That is our factored out version. So there are factors, which means x equals negative 1, 3, or 3 halves. Now we graph each of these pieces. So negative 1, 3, 3 halves is 1 and a half. Now we're starting it's a positive, so we're starting down and ending up because it's an odd degree. So there is my sketched graph. So now let's look at this problem, and I'm going to go quickly on this one because we've been doing it for so long. Now, how many possible zeros are there going to be? Well, there's going to be four zeros. We know there's going to be four zeros, but are they all going to be rational? That's the question. So again, let's go do our P's over our Q, and then do our synthetic division, and we get our new factor, f of x equals x plus 4 times 2x cubed plus 1x squared plus x minus 1. And again, we're going to do synthetic division. And we get our last piece is f of x equals x plus 4 times x plus, or sorry, x minus a half times x 2x squared plus 2x plus 2. We'll have to do our quadratic formula for this, and we'll get x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root 
of 2 squared minus 4 times 2 times 2 all over 2 times 2, which will get us x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 16 all over 4. You guys should be able to see right now we can't have a negative there, so x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 over 4, which means we need to change this bad boy to x equals negative 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 12 over 4. And when we simplify that, we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 2, or square root of 3 over 2, which means our actual zeros, all of our zeros are that, and x equals 4 and, sorry, negative 4 and 1 half are our rationals and our irrational zeros, which means they aren't real zeros, they don't actually cross the x-axis, are x equals negative 1 plus or minus i squared to 3 over 2. All right, so you are going to have to know how to find the imaginary ones as well. So make sure you guys know how to do that. That's all we're going to talk about this video. Make sure you rewatch anything you need to. Let me know if you guys have any questions.